Let's continue our discussion of elimination reactions. As you know, alkenes are formed as products. <clears throat> as you can see on the slide, the alkene with the bulkiest groups on the same side of the double bond is less stable because the electron clouds of the large substituents can interfere with each other, causing steric strain. So E2-pentene is more stable of the two illustrated on this slide. Notice these two bulky groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, whereas with Z2-pentene they're on the same side, so they are, have interacting electron clouds causing steric strain. Let's go to the next slide. As shown in the reaction coordinate diagram on this slide, for the E2 reaction of 2-bromopentane and ethoxide ion, the more stable alkene has the more stable transition state and therefore is formed more rapidly. Now we can see here 2-bromopentane has uh, the alpha carbon to which the bromine is bonded to and then a beta carbon to the left and a second beta carbon to the right. And the beta carbon to the left has three protons bonded to the carbon. And the beta carbon to the right of the alpha carbon has two beta carbons, hydrogens bonded to the beta carbon. And in this case, Zetsev rule is followed in the E2 reaction, where the major product is formed, where the proton is removed from the beta carbon with a fewer number of hydrogens. And it results in, in this product here, a Z and E form of that product. And notice that the E is of lower energy because it's a more stable uh, form of the product where the two bulky groups are um, across from each other of the double bond. Okay, let's go to the next slide. In this slide, we have two E2 reactions are given as examples of the statement that's made right here at the top of the slide. The particular alkene isomer that is formed depends on the configuration of the reactant. So these two E2 uh, reactions uh, begin with, as you can see here, with the methoxy ion and the, uh, taking a proton and the loss of the bromine at the same time. So um, in the first reaction, we can call this anti-elimination of HBr from 2S, 3S, 2-bromo-3-phenylbutane, which is the name of this compound. And it forms the E isomer which is shown here, which is analogous to trans isomer, um, whereas anti-elimination of HBr from 2S3R 2-bromo-3-phenylbutane forms the Z isomer, where the bulky groups are on the same side, or cis in essence, where this is a priority group, this is a priority group, and of course with E isomer, or trans. This right here is a priority group and this is a priority group. So we have anti-elimination of HBr shown in this slide. The hydrogen and bromine are on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon bond, so that's why we call them anti. Hydrogen and bromine, notice where they're positioned here and also in this case in the second example. So the particular alkene isomer it's formed will depend on the configuration of the reactant. And again, this was 2S, 3S, this is 2S, 3R. And <clears throat> this is number one, number two, number three. It's on 3S that we see a we see that, that results in the E isomer, whereas the second example we have one, two, three the number of these carbons, and 3R as opposed to 3S 
three R results in the Z isomer. Now let's look at the stereochemistry of E1 reactions. What are the two distinct steps in the E1 reaction? First, the leaving group leaves. Second, a proton is lost from an adjacent carbon, following Zetsev's rule, in order to form the more stable alkene. In the first step, after the leaving group departs, a carbocation is formed that is planar. So electrons from the departing hydrogen can move toward the positively charged carbon from either side. As a result, both syn and anti-elimination can occur. Since this can happen, both E and Z products are formed, regardless of whether the beta carbon from which the proton is removed is bonded to one or two hydrogens. Now the first example has two hydrogens, and the second example has one hydrogen. So let's look at this a little closer on the slide. You can see that we have a beta carbon here that has two hydrogens and the first step we lose the bromine and we form a carbocation planar structure and in the second step we lose the proton and we form E and Z isomers. Of course E is more stable and is the major product of the reaction. We have both syn and anti-elimination occurring. The second example down here, we have one hydrogen on the beta carbon in, in this example. In the first step, we lose the halogen, the chlorine, forming a planar carbocation. In the second step, we have the loss of the proton and the formation of the E and the Z uh, forms of the product. And of course, E is more stable. Okay, elimination from cyclic compounds. In an E2 reaction, groups to be eliminated must be trans to one another. Here's bromocyclopentane. Notice that the, the two uh, groups that are going to be eliminated are across from each other, above, below the plane, of this cyclic compound, and then here we have also uh, hydrogen is actual up and bromine is actual down and, and bromocyclohexane. So <clears throat> in the diagram we see on the left hydrogen and bromine are trans and on the right hydrogen and bromine are both in the actual positions. Just as with elimination from open chain compounds, as we've seen previously, anti-periplanar geometry is preferred for an E2 reaction involving cyclic compounds. The two groups being eliminated from a cyclic compound must be trans to one another. If it involves a six-membered ring, as on the right, the groups being eliminated must both be in the actual position to be anti-periplanar. We learned from Chapter 2 earlier that the more stable conformer of a monosubstituted cyclohexane is the one in which the substituent is in the equatorial position because there's more room for the substituent in that position. So the more stable conformer of, cyclo, of chlorocyclohexane does not undergo an E2 reaction because the chlorosubstituent is in the equatorial position. And that's shown on the next slide. What position must it be in? In an E2 reaction of a substituted cyclohexane, the groups being eliminated must both be in the actual position. And we'll see this on the next slide. So here you can see the more stable uh, situation here on the left and then on the right, the less stable situation. Uh, for E2 reactions to occur, the groups being eliminated must both be in the actual positions. Of course, here they're both in actual. Here on the left, they're equatorial, or the chlorine's equatorial. Although more stable, under E2 conditions, no reaction is going to occur. Whereas with them both in the actual position, although less stable, under E2 conditions, we will get a reaction. Okay, that's it.